seated. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, welcome to Christ Lutheran Church here in Glencoe. Uh, if you are a visitor, I'm so glad you're here. It's my first Sunday here, too. Thank you for welcoming me so graciously. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Becker. My husband, Dan, is back there by the window. We've been married for a whopping two weeks. <laughs> I recently moved here from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, you can get to know me better by shaking my hand after the service if you're a handshaker or a fist bumper. And then next Sunday, of course, will be coffee and bars with more of a chance uh, to get to know one another. But I hope we'll uh, also get to know anyone else who uh, might be here for the first time uh, this Sunday. The first thing we want to do is say uh, happy anniversaries and birthdays. Uh, so happy anniversary to Tina and Jim Roski. I don't know if they're here. And a big happy birthday to Cody Swenson, Norma Buchholz, Ronald Knopp, Joshua Keen, Peggy Menning. Oh, I just saw Peggy. Okay, happy birthday. <laughs> this week. Uh, Madeline Lemke, Jeffrey Schrader, Morgan Verdick, Samantha Volbrick, Megan Hoffman, Don Peterson, who I met Thursday in the office. Where's Don? Are you here? There. Hi, Don. <laughs> Happy birthday on Thursday. Uh, Janice Petrick, Stephanie Zajanik. Where are you here, Stephanie? Uh, Jerome Aid and Brayden Moeller. Uh, and of course, happy birthday to our nation. Uh, let us pray. God, you hold all our times in your hand. We lift up to you those whose days increase and we celebrate them, asking that you continue to guard, guide, and bless them through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Uh, oh, also in that prayer, I forgot, I, uh, my new mother and father-in-law gave me the graduation bulletin for the Glencoe Silver Lake District, and I got a chance to look through that, and I was really intrigued. So I'm also asking that God's blessing would be upon uh, all the graduates who now have been out of school for a month. Where will they be today? They've launched. Uh, so, uh, let us stand for our confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and to seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help, help us. us. It, is it is hard to believe there, there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share, Share with us the words of eternal, eternal life, and feed, feed us for life in the world. Amen. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. God of the covenant, in, in our, our baptism, baptism, you call, call us to proclaim the coming of your, of your kingdom. kingdom. Give, Give us the courage you gave, gave the apostles. apostles 
that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Ezekiel in chapter 2. He said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are, are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. And the second reading comes from Second Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me, to keep me from being too elated." Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities, for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Here ends the readings. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their own hometown and among their own kin and in their own house and he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them and he was amazed at their unbelief then he went about among the villages teaching he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. 
He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord, we say, Praise, Praise to you, O Lord. Christ. Have we been given the equipment we need to do the job we've been assigned? That is the summation of what I would say the Gospel of Mark is offering us today. And that the equipment that I have met here at Christ Lutheran is grace. Everywhere that grace has been mentioned in the Bible, you can find freedom and generosity. And that is what Jesus sends out his disciples with. No bag, no purse, just sandals and authority with grace. And wherever uh, that grace is welcomed, peace comes to that place. And wherever that grace is not welcomed, well, they just shake the dust off their feet and move forward. I uh, wrote in a little uh, bio in the bulletin about uh, reflecting on um, who your favorite Sunday school teacher uh, was when you were a child, or perhaps is today, someone you know. Uh, and I'd like to know that. So if you do stop and shake my hand and you want to just briefly say, oh, well, it was my uh, great aunt Edna from, you know, when I was a child, tell me that. Um, for me, it was a woman from the church I grew up in when I was four years old. And of course, those, in those days, there was a little tiny felt board uh, with little tiny felt figurines, and she would bring it out and tell the stories from the Bible with the little felt figurines and move them across, you know. And that made such an impression on me uh, that when I became uh, in a leadership role with Sunday School, uh, I created a felt kingdom with uh, a thousand felt characters that I cut myself um, representing every person in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. So, if you are a Sunday school teacher sitting here thinking, I wonder if what my ministry is about makes any difference, you may never know. You may never know. Uh, that teacher back in North Brookfield, Massachusetts, um, in 1973, had no idea what um, her ministry was going to equip me and prepare me to do, and give me a love of scripture. Uh, all right, I also want to talk about that I have been equipped uh, from the Episcopal Church. I'm an Episcopal priest, and I um, am so thankful that the Episcopal Church and the ELCA Church have communion. Uh, that means we get to share equipment. <laughs> that means we get to share personnel. That means we share grace. And can we have too much grace? I don't think so. Uh, so I'm going to be getting to know what it's like to be Lutheran at Christ Lutheran. I will <laughs> let you know that uh, my father's 
father was Lutheran. Uh, his name was George Back. My father's mother was Roman Catholic. Uh, Grace Hepner. Grace. Uh, so when they got married, they chose the Episcopal Church, which is one reason the Episcopal Church has membership, uh, is the way <laughs> Lutherans and Roman Catholics fall in love. So I fell in love with a Minnesotan. Uh, I had never even visited, uh, well, no, I take that back. I had been to St. Olaf's uh, for a, a church meeting, but I didn't really know anything about Minnesota until I really got to know Dan. So here I am. Um, so I feel like I've been equipped with uh, the grace of God. Um, and I also have uh, been ordained for 25 years. I'm coming up on my 26th anniversary. Um, so I also understand this little passage in Mark where Jesus goes to his hometown right and all of the people who know him best look at him and say wait a minute we know where he's from does he have the same equipment right that we do we know his parents and his brothers and sisters we know that he's a carpenter Hmm, how can he do these deeds and say these things with this equipment? Hmm. And they take offense at that. So they are shaking the dust of that grace off their feet. Um, not all of it. There's a little dust catches on and, and some people are healed, right? Uh, so I had this vision when uh, Dan and I were married in St. Paul at Summit Manor, uh, and it was of this um, like heavenly, cosmic-sized pitcher uh, filled with grace, and God was pouring it upon us in the community of our family and friends gathered around us, uh, to celebrate uh, our union. That image of pouring really uh, echoed again when I was thinking about what the word Christ means. Why would this community choose the name Christ? For Christ Lutheran, it means anointed, um, and it's biblically being anointed with oil kind of being smeared uh, with grace. So we have this moment uh, to appreciate, to worship God, give thanks for all that God pours out in this community, uh, the transitions, um, saying goodbye to Pastor Catherine, preparing for a new pastor. I'm so thankful to be your interim. I'm so thankful uh, for this time of grace together and that we are being sent forward um, in grace, by grace, for grace, uh, that the whole world will know uh, that God has equipped all of creation for freedom and for generosity. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith in God with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he ascended into the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of all, through the waters of baptism, you claim people of all races, ethnicities, and languages as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase their faith, that your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Lord, in your mercy. God of the heavens, your creating spirit animates the universe. We give you thanks for the moon and stars, for the planets and the Milky Way galaxy and for all the mysteries of the cosmos that remain unknown to us, Lord, in your mercy. God of freedom, you have liberated us from sin and death and rescue us from all forms of spiritual, social, and political oppression. Defend us from tyrants in our midst and deliver us from all forms of slavery or corruption. Direct our freedom for works of liberation and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, you became vulnerable in the person of Jesus Christ, in solidarity with the disempowered. Strengthen those who feel faint, give courage to those who fear, and bring wholeness to those in need. Especially today, remembering all those on our prayer list, Daniel, Matt, Troy, Barb, Bill, Kevin, Richard, Lois, Diane, Denise, Brent, LaDonna, Dennis, Cassandra, Taylin, Colin, Julie, Gary, Charlotte, Sandy, Stanley, Mary, Brad, Luann, Marlis, Sandra, Dennis, Eric, Carol, Brayden, Bo, Marie, Gary, and Edie. Lord, in your mercy. God of holiness, you send us out into the world to proclaim your love. We pray for our outreach ministries, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. Equip us as we leave this place to witness and serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, you raise up leaders to all nations. Help us honor the history of our nation faithfully and grant all elected leaders your wisdom and grace, especially Joe, our president, Tim, our governor, and Ryan, our mayor. Lord, in your mercy. God of all creativity and growth, thank you for all those who have achieved their independence through graduation from high school and continue to provide for all they need that their paths may prosper. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks that in every time and place you call forth prophets who move us towards freedom. Thank you for those who work for human rights, community organizers, and all who strive for liberty, liberty for all. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Our alms basins are still in the entrance. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self. 
and called us to the Feast of Plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup of wine and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus has set the table with more than enough for all. I'd like to invite the assistants forward, please. bread of life we have received from your table more than we could ever ask as you have nourished us in this meal now strengthen us to love the world with your own life in your name we pray amen, amen. all righty i just want to say thank you for your patience flexibility and grace this morning and please read all of the many uh, ways that god has equipped this place to minister to the world in the printed announcements. There is a lot going on around here. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and always. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ.